you. I knew it was you. I knew I'd see you again, but how did you get in? You can't stay. You, you can't stay here. Why, why am I drawn to you so? I have no defense against you, Dracula. I'm speaking to you now as if I have known you all your life. And we are joined by all that is unholy and unperceived. I want you to listen to me. I'm speaking to you heart to heart and mind to mind. My voice is your voice. My heartbeat is your heartbeat. I'm speaking to you heart to heart and mind to mind. My voice is your voice. What I think, what I feel, what I wish is what you think, what you feel, and what you wish. the impression you were two people. <laughs> Do you feel anything? No. Why am I supposed to? Well, sometimes this trick doesn't be remembered by the very characteristics of the nature. We are all hypnotized by life. This demonstration is but a small infinitesimal part of what goes on beneath the surface of our everyday lives. At any given moment in our lives, we are what we were and what we always will be. I am an illusion. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, 
We have all been duped. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, Wainwright. You are in the tradition of Houdini and Blackstone before you. I am not a musician. Indeed, you are not. You are a pretender, among a coven of pretenders. And you are rude, sir, whoever you are. Excuse me? I have been excusing you all evening, Wainwright. You and your feeble trickery, mere illusion, child's play. You need a lesson in manners, my friend. We are not friends. Mr. Wainwright, that was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. It was more than mere fascination, my dear. Please, you, please, I need to talk to you. You were resisting my hypnosis. I could feel it. I know, and I'm sorry. Can't we try again? I've got a lot on my mind. I'm sorry, not now. But it's my mother. That's why we're here, please. I'm afraid that I am here for a purpose also. Perhaps some other time. But... Well, what do you think now, Elliot? You still intrigued with our little um, society of the occult here? That man, Wainwright. Fascinating gentleman, don't you think? No charlatan, I can assure you. His new book will silence all the daughters once and for all. This is no mere folly, Elliot. Be certain before you join us. Do you think it could really help? She's haunted by the memory of her mother even more than I. The wonders of the supernatural are at your disposal, Eric. They always have been. Oh, you're a skeptic. If you could train yourself to deliver your spirit, to submit to greater powers, a whole world would open to you. To feel the spirit power generated here tonight, it's all about us. It pervades our very presence now. Look at the vigil lights. Oh, don't be absurd. Your feeble gods and superstitions are useless here. You said you'd help. And I will, Stephen. Once we give Wainwright's book a proper send-off. Now, if you'll excuse me. You all right, dear? We're wasting our time, Father. No one here really cares. Be patient, Stan. Hadley Ratcliffe is one of my best friends, and he said he'd oh, help. that old fool. All he cares about is occultism and his weird little circle of Stephanie. friends. Stephanie! Oh, I'm sorry, Father, but it's true. What good is the supernatural if it doesn't work for you? I'm sorry, I just can't help it. I'm trying to help, Stephanie. My mother didn't just die, and you know that as well as I do. She was young and vital. And I've got to know, Father. And I'm going to find out with or without your help. I have some ideas of my own I'm going to pursue. My daughter, she's an excitable young woman. Ever since her mother died. They were very close. Maybe if she hadn't been away at college at the time. Oh, excuse me. You were Dr. Gregorio. Radcliffe's been telling me about you, Stephen Elliott. Unlike our enterprising young author, I deal not in illusion, nor am I a magician. I'll leave that to Wainwright and his Fingali fixation. Your daughter's a fine young woman. I deal in psychiatry, Mr. Elliot. I'm in the book, Anatole Gregorio. And when you've finished subjecting your daughter to these charlatans, you might consider providing professional help. That is, if you care as much about her as you say you do. She does need care. Feel your eyes punishing me. I don't punish. <laughs> well, I need another drink. Would you join me? I don't drink. Very well. 
just trying to make amends. Perhaps another time. I enjoyed your book, Dr. Wainwright. Well, thank you very much. You know, you even look like Svengali. Yes, uh, many people have said that. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, won't you join me at the bar for a moment? Well, thank you very much. Thank It'd you. be my pleasure. Excuse me. Thank you. Bye. There's one question I meant to ask you. Tell me, how do I know that you're really the second Svengali? You saw my demonstration? Oh, well, yes, you're... you're demonstration was very persuasive, but after all, those tricks could have been performed by any competent magician. It was mere illusion. I find the fact that my publisher has not read my book is highly insulting. <laughs> but of course I haven't read your book. <laughs> If you'll forgive me for not using your stage name, Dr. Wainwright, let me remind you that before you entered this business of illusions, you were famous as a brilliant university scholar. That's why we bought your manuscript. But one talent does not imply the other. Many brilliant scholars are useless fools. So are many authors. <laughs> But you believe in my psychic powers. I do not doubt your psychic powers, Sengali. It's the character of Dr. Wainwright that raises certain difficult questions. The reason that Svengali chose me for his incarnation and manifestation are clearly outlined in my book, copies of which, thanks to you, are appearing in any bookstore in this country, if you'll excuse me, Sir Stephen. Just a minute, Dr. Wainwright. If you are really the second Svengali, then you'll remember who I am. Blood of the road. Then no one's been fooled. Dr. Wainwright, everyone has been fooled. Except me. What do you want? There's no way that anybody cannot know if it's obvious to you. It's obvious to everybody else. I'm telling you. No one imagines that you're really Svengali. Everyone thinks it's a conventional publicity stunt. A man writes a book about reincarnation, of course he claims to be reincarnated himself. Especially in the case of a character as strong as Svengali. They all think it's a gimmick that we created to add a little charm and glamour to a scholarly treatise. A scholarly treatise, by the way, that's a bestseller. The clearest proof to me that everyone has been fooled. Enjoy the show, Dr. Wainwright. do that all the time. Why? Life gave him a small brain and a big appetite. He thinks it's the other way around. Who is he? Roland's the manager of this club. Although he'll take what he can get on the side. Because he's a pimp at heart, he thinks everybody's that way. You know, he even takes money from poor Bobo. Bobo? The magician? What's wrong with Bobo? Bobo can't hear and he can't speak. The way he expresses himself is through his magic tricks. Do you think that's fantastic? Bobo lies with his magic. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobo the magician! And now, Ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful butterfly, Noel!
What about a man who doesn't have to lie to get what he wants? I don't follow what you mean. Suppose that there was a man who could make you do whatever he wanted you to. Like a hypnotist. Is that possible? No. You'd have to be willing. I mean, a hypnotist can't make you do what you don't want to do. Although, I do believe that a certain kind of man has power over women. Life being what it is, I'm certain this happens all the time. To be swept off her feet by the look in a man's eyes, is that a young girl's fantasy? No, that's an old man's fantasy. I'm here. I want a life. We need a pure soul. She'll do. How much time do I have? Seven days. I'm sorry, Mr. Wainwright. I don't mean to intrude, but I really have to see you. I see no one without an appointment, especially at this hour. Please, don't ask me to leave. There is no one else. At least hear me. With your knowledge of Svengali and his mental powers, and after watching you this evening, I just know you can reunite us. Bring us together somehow, my mother and I. I can feel it. Can't you? Perhaps. Just for a few moments. Tell me about your mother. She was the picture of health, Mr. Wainwright. She couldn't just die. She was full of life. Tell me what you think of it. Well, there was a peaceful smile on her face when her body was found. But she died violently. I know that, Mr. Wainwright. Why else would I have these terrible nightmares about her dying? What do you expect from me? If you could reunite us in some way, just so I could be sure my mother rests in peace. I have no power. That wasn't me this evening. Then Svengali. Or whoever it is you call upon. I'd gladly trade places with her. Look into my eyes. Deep into my eyes. Deeper. Think of nothing but my voice. Yes. Svengali hears you, my dear. And this time you will pay attention. Yes. Anyone so willing to trade places with the dead? You must find a place for such selflessness. Yes. Deeper. I want you to visualize your mother. Everything that's happening. Tell me exactly what you're seeing. Her face. Tell me what you're seeing. Her face. It's becoming pale, drawn, shock-white. 
in her blood. Blood? Blood being drained from her. Go on. She's making noises. Like she's in agony. Oh, oh no, don't. Sounds awful. And now she's lived. Like the... Someone must pay for this, Stephanie. Yes. The deeds of fiends must be paid for in kind. You will obey only the will of Svengali. And you will not doubt his power ever again, will you, Stephanie? No, Svengali. And Stephanie will punish the enemies of Svengali as well. Yes.
Blessed be the name of Satan, king of the universe. Blessed be the seven-horned beast. Blessed be all his incarnations of evil. Thanks, what are you doing? instruments of persuasion, wouldn't you say? They were used at Loudon, you know, to exercise the devils of Loudon. Huxley wrote a book on it. Seems the good sisters were consumed with lust. And Richelieu, in turn, had the local padre burned at the stake. Similar to that one over there, which originated during the First Crusade. Tell you, this is grisly. This is hardly the place for a meeting, especially since the way Stephanie's been acting. So you said. Sounds like your daughter had a genuine flair for the dramatic. No doubt something she inherited from Valerie. Touche, Andy. But neither my wife nor my daughter are a joking matter. These last few months have been too bizarre, ever since Valerie was buried. Your wife died long before that, my friend. She was preparing for death. From what you've told me, she gave you every sign and you ignored it, just as you're ignoring the same signs of Stephanie. I'm not interested in your supernatural speculations. My daughter's on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and so... I'm... No need to be harsh, Elliot. Merely trying to help. We just haven't been ourselves these last few months. Hadley. Hadley. Stephanie seems possessed. The memory of her mother is tormenting her beyond reason. Possession, you say? Hmm. Something we might be able to deal with. Hadley. Let's get out of here. Elliot. We're in the company of sorcerers, wizards, diviners. Shamans of the highest order. Can't you feel them? Close your eyes, man. They're amongst us. Hadley, for God's sake. Gods! Damn your soul, Elliot. I speak your immortality, and you speak to me of gods. It's blasphemy. Where's the adventure in your soul? You see these torches? Relics of the Druids who burned them 3,500 years ago at Stonehenge. A sect that worshipped the sun by day and lit up the skies at night in homage to the pagan spirit. Beelzebub, Azazel, Abaddon, Mephisto, Belial, Elvis, all the messengers of his satanic majesty. Prepare yourself for the visitation of demons, Elliot. We must purge your doubt, not only yours those of your bewitched daughter as well. What do you do? You really want to know? I'm a magician. But that's not important. The important thing is that you and I have lunch tomorrow. Hey, Shelby, come on. I want to get home. Okay. Uh. 
Okay. Tomorrow. But no tricks. No tricks. Steph. Mother, talk to me from the rivers of eternity. Call to me as I call to you. Guide my soul so that I might join you. Speak to me. Run the springs of fire. I instruct you. Leave me alone. Tread not this path, for it will destroy. just didn't know who else to turn to, Doctor. It could be demonic possession, but that's not really my specialty, Mr. Elliot. Without the girl to examine. But I didn't want to move her. I was afraid to. I've been trying to think this thing out all night. I don't know whether to have her committed or what. It's just about light outside, and I was just about to go to sleep. Time doesn't exist for me, Doctor. You must leave. I insist. But, Doctor, you said you'd help just the other evening. But at a reasonable hour. But, Doctor, you must help me. Money's no object. I'll pay you anything that you like. I'd sell my very soul. Doctor, please. Steph is the only thing I have. She's the only thing I have left. Only her life means something to me. Please, I just want to see her happy once again. You see that Stephanie contacts me. Oh, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> you will help her. I've never been an advocate of psychiatry. I've never had a need to, but I just didn't know where else to turn. I'll make no promises, understand? Now, you must leave. I, I hope you don't think I've been rude, but I've been under such strain and such stress. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Thanks are premature. Now, you must leave. Uh, of course, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Doctor. and the unemployed. The unemployed? The artists. Svengali. Sir Stephen. Won't you join us? If I wouldn't be intruding. Sir Stephen, this is Trilby. Oh, I remember you from the club. Why did you call him Svengali? It's an old joke. I wrote a book on Svengali and 
Stevens, my publisher. I enjoyed your dance. Tell me, what do you think about up there, huh? Gosh, I don't really think about anything. You know, it's just a job. <laughs> I'm giving a party Saturday night. I hope you can both come. Wow, that would be wonderful. It's my birthday and I have the day off. That is, if it's all right with you, John. I'm certain it's all right with Bengali. What do you want with her? <coughs> I must pass on to another incarnation. so special. If you want a soul, let me get you a soul. Don't you realize that if you don't follow my commands, your incarnation as John Wainwright will be canceled? I'm sorry. Please excuse the indiscretion. If you want her soul, you shall have it. What's wrong with you, Svengali? Are you beginning to feel emotional? Are you falling in love with this girl? I've been having difficulties with Dr. Wainwright. Difficulties? Of what sort? He's trying to reemerge. You know, if he reemerges, Svengali is finished forever. <laughs> Not just Svengali. It's my last chance, too. The reason Wainwright is reemerging is because we are losing psychic energy. The only thing that can save us is an aggressive incorporation of a new psychic energy source. That's why we need that girl. What is she? She is a unique and unusual soul. We've been looking for someone like her for over 60 years. In fact, you were reincarnated just to bring her to us. Oh, what an intriguing place. I suspected as much. I knew you were one of us, Doctor. You know, no one at Radcliffe seems to know who you are. But I said that's one interesting man. Why he radiates mystery and feelings of the occult, while the rest of us merely flirt with the supernatural. And then Radcliffe said... Radcliffe is a fool. Can I get you a glass of wine? Whatever you're having, Doctor. Your place really is spooky, Doctor. <laughs> it's as though it were decorated by the devil. What's in here? Something forbidden and positively naughty, I'll bet. Yes, my dear. Positively naughty. Why, doctor, you are wicked. I should have known. I've always wanted to make love in a coffin. You sly devil. I'll bet you knew all along.
What would you do for a hundred dollars you wouldn't do for twenty? ceremony. We will find some uses for her. What did you find there? What does it matter? Is this what's going to happen to Troby? Are you in love with her? You must not let your emotions interfere with the performance of your duty. <laughs> what makes Troby so attractive to you? She has a beautiful soul, a rare and vital presence. I realize that by falling in love, I risk my entire existence. But this is not the ordinary love for mere physical beauty. I am enamored with the soul of a sinner. But we are losing power. Don't you understand that you cannot let this happen? Deliver Trilby. I don't think I could last that long. You must. Watch over her. Don't use your power unless it is absolutely necessary. This is destroying me. I thought that was fully understood, Wainwright. This is totally unnecessary to, to subject Trilby to such torture. You talk like a fool. You and I both know our own existence is at stake. Immortality, man. For God's sake. You don't understand the seriousness of this. Without the sacrifice of Trilby, we all perish. It's taken 60 years of searching for us to arrive at this point. Why else do you think Svengali's spirit has been reincarnated? Why else do you think we woo you, Wainwright? Or is it Svengali? I never know who is in control. Are you going to be all right? I'm fine, you old fool. Yes, that's more like it. Once Trilby has paid our debt, you can have anyone you like. Stephanie would be perfect, of course. She needs a strong, disciplined influence. Her father's nothing more than a wimp. I can see the guy was already interested. I see you're easily distracted. All a part of your illness, I'm sure. That'll soon be behind you. You haven't said why you're here. Because of your condition, I expect you to meet with you tomorrow, as your father arranged. I'm not really sure why I'm here. Well, it's time you went home. I want you well rested for our little visit tomorrow. Besides, these people and their so-called power over the magic is non-existent. Ah, you're looking better already, my dear. 
Either your father is an alarmist, or you have found the medicine here among us, Stephanie. Leaving so early, Doctor, the ceremonies have barely started. As these souls are on our intimate little enclave, just mysterious enough to arouse your curiosity, I should think. Her imagination is what created her problem, Radcliffe. A highly active one. I think it's time the patient took her imagination home and put it to bed. Don't be absurd. You're defeating our own purposes. I promised Elliot we would do everything we could to exercise whatever it is that's tormenting this poor child. The time is almost at hand. Come, Stephanie. Observe the altar. Remove your hand, please. This woman is under my care, Radcliffe. Now. Don't abuse my hospitality, Doctor. You're exhausting my patience, as you always do. You are a guest here. This child needs treatment that only the purest magic can provide. I'm the leader of these proceedings. This enclave was organized for the patronization of his satanic majesty and for no other reason. You'll have to continue your futile experiments in psychiatry elsewhere. This is the domain of the demon god. No other shall celebrate in spirit or exercise their... their... Good evening, Radcliffe. Good evening. I don't know that I want to go. No one asked you what you wanted. You're still under that fool's insignificant power. But I'm about to show you what real power is. Everlasting power. Why do you want to be reunited with your mother? She may not want to meet with you. Oh, but she will. Be so sure. At last she's free. She's no longer enslaved by a limited existence. But her death, it was so gruesome. Death. I'm sure she left this particular world joyfully. Death can be a rapturous release. If only that were true. Still doubt me. Very well. You may ask her for yourself. You are joking. I promised your father I would rid you of your suspicions and bring you peace. <laughs> should be home resting. What are you doing here? If you knew how I worried. I'm under the doctor's care. You need never worry again. Now, now. I know how you feel. No! Stay where you are. Why is she here? Mother, my God. Get her out of here. There's no need for jealousy, Valerie. Not among us. I've been waiting for you, Gregorio. Mother, what's happened to you? Get out of here. Mother, why are you being so cruel? Leave us. Gregorio belongs to me. Valerie? (laughs) 
I hate violence. It's so unnecessary. I can save you from dreadful experiences like that. Forever. That's not much. I assure you. It is. Your pain gives me pleasure. <laughs> Your terror becomes my happiness. I delight in your misery. <laughs> Who are you? What is this place? <laughs> Don't ask questions. I'll tell you what you need to know. Let me, let me go. <laughs> when you understand what's in store for you here, you'll consider yourself extremely fortunate. We're interested in people like you who are extremely sensitive. People who are <coughs> passionate. Now, you chose to be a prostitute. That's how I make my living. Uh -huh. Oh, no. You won't have to lie anymore. We've given you the gift of compulsion to obey. <laughs> For the first time in your life, you, you act truthfully. What will be become of me? You'll, you'll exist at your outer limits. You're completely free to be and say and do anything you want. Consistent with your desire to be entirely slave. Hmm. It's the privilege of a very few to become a sensual object. Kiss my feet. <laughs> There, Stephen. I'm glad I was brought here. I feel a lot better about the direction my life has taken. I'm sure of myself now. I now know where I'm going. Human life can transcend the individual and partake of the universe through an intense crystallization of form. And that is how reincarnation is possible, if the spirit is strong. What makes the spirit strong? The incorporation of other souls. Human sacrifice. I've heard about such things, but you don't mean to say that they go on today. I mean, that's murder. Murder. Well, murder is a very hard term to define. People who are participating in a sacrifice don't look upon it as murder. Merely part of a process. At least that's my understanding of it. I really don't understand these things too well. Besides, I've got things a lot more important on my mind than reincarnation. What do you mean? Something wrong? 
You know, it's like this. You meet a guy, he seems nice, and then later you discover that deep, deep down inside he's a weirdo or a Frankenstein. You have a nice time with him. He buys you dinner. He takes you home. Then he expects you to treat him like your husband or your lover. And when you don't, he starts to grow fangs like Dracula. Or looking at you like, like Svengali. What do you want with me anyway? I need your soul. I gotta go. Time for work.
What are you wearing? Do you like it? You're a very beautiful woman. You're a beautiful man. Roses are my favorite flower. I kind of thought they might be. I'm going to have to leave. Trouble, you're going to have to leave right now. Jeremy, could you come in here immediately? Please, don't ask me why. Just, you have to leave now. Jeremy! I'll get in touch with you tomorrow or, or at the club. Wait for my phone call. Jeremy, could why? you please escort this young lady home now, immediately? Thank you very much. Good night, Trouble. Good night, Trouble. Gee, I like that. Deja vu or lapses of memory followed by headaches are sometimes indications of possession by reincarnated spirits. Superconscious knowledge can overpower the spirit of the beast. To exercise, become conscious of the spirit's weakness. Notice the attraction your body has for things which your mind does not. It means that an alien soul is using your body. It means that an alien soul is using your body. To reverse the process, to gain control of the alien soul, use the weaknesses and desires of the alien soul. Deja vu or lapses of memory followed by headaches are sometimes indications of possession by reincarnated spirits. Superconscious knowledge can overpower the spirit of the beast. To exercise, become conscious of the spirit's weakness. desires of the alien soul.
Where do you want to show me, Sri Kali? Truby is a goddess, an eternal energy source. She's a link between this life and the next. This is incredible. I'm sorry for you, Dr. Wainwright, but she must die in order that we live. Who's, who's we? We are the Society of the Bleeding Rose. Or is you? Innocent fool's cause. The evil ones. But you don't understand that what's evil for one is good for another. I won't let you get away with this, Vengali. I know too much. Your rational powers are nothing compared to ours, Dr. Wainwright. We've had the knowledge of centuries, centuries before your so-called rational thought was ever invented. I'm free of you now, Svengali. Not for long. I don't have much time. Very soon it's going to be dangerous for you to be with me. This is going to sound strange, but... I'm going to try to kill you. John, you must be freaking out. Have you been dropping something? I've learned to detach myself from nature. But this is a very vulnerable state. And during one of these states, I was possessed by an incarnation of Svengali, a real Svengali, a satanic incarnation. And they need your psychic power. Svengali's been sent to get you. You're serious, aren't you? As soon as Svengali takes possession of me again, he's going to control you. There is nothing you can do about it. Truby, please, just get away. Immediately. Please. But how? I can feel him trying to get me again. I've got to get out of here. Now look, Truby, if you ever see me again, don't look into my eyes. John?
no need to be nervous with the alarm, Stephanie. Just exactly what is this mysterious rite you're taking me to at Radcliffe's house? A sacrificial black mass. Black mass? Yes. Those fools who believe in the so-called powers of Satan summon up his strength in what they think is their time of need. Is that what Radcliffe's study of the occult has led him to? Exactly. Radcliffe, Sir Stephen, and your friend who thinks he's Fingali has deluded themselves into thinking that their devil worship can bring them eternal life. They're headed in the wrong direction. Radcliffe is really the one who controls their weak minds. Each one of them has a power within himself to extend his life or to bring about his own destruction. But you said it was a sacrificial mass. It is. Tonight you will bear witness to the death by sacrifice of a young woman named Trilby. Human sacrifice? Yes. And there's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop it. Save me, because I don't want to die. Not like this. It's too late. <laughs> Let's get on with it. It's almost time. Wait until the stroke of midnight. It's too late. She's dead, you fools. There is an enemy among us within this unholy circle. 
neck is putrid. The work of a vampire. We are doomed. You betrayed us. We shared our magic with you, and now we must perish. We share nothing, sheep of the Atreus. I have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the experience of centuries at my command. You destroyed her. Her sacrifice meant our eternal life! She was never yours, magician. She was always mine for the taking. As are all of you. You didn't really expect your feeble rituals to be any match for me. You will perish with us. and every one of them. But how did it happen? Through the power of the mind. Just as Wainwright was convinced he was possessed by the spirit of Svengali, they all believed their time was running out. Even without trophy, they were doomed. Their subconscious minds willed it. Your getting involved with them almost proved a fatal mistake. But it was only because of my mother. That's why I went to Wainwright. I thought he could help me. My mother and I were very close. And it's been difficult living without her. I know that. And you know that I'm the only one that can show you the way. Just as I was able to show you that your mother still lives. And so what can you do for me? Reunite you with your mother in a new and eternal form of life. To be the way she is? Yes. A lost soul with a life drained out of it. No. I'd rather give up my own life to see my mother at peace. But the only way I can do that is to destroy the creature who made her the way she is. You, Gregorio.